Remember James Cameron walking the red carpet in 1997 at the premiere of his film, Titanic? To some critics, he was a man walking the plank, headed for a sea of red ink with a $200 million movie that couldn't possibly cover its costs. Nearly $2 billion in sales later, along with 11 Oscars, including one for Best Director, the 50-year-old Cameron is doing quite nicely. And he's still getting his feet and cameras wet. The camera looks clear. After Titanic came Ghost of the Abyss, his documentary on the Titanic shipwreck in its watery grave. And this month, Cameron was on the red carpet again to introduce Aliens of the Deep, a bottom-of-the-sea tour of places and creatures that trump anything Hollywood can create, because they're real. Oh my God! Ten-foot-tall red and white tube worms swaying ever so slightly in the currents. A shimmering pink octopus with wings, no less. And out of the dark, fish that still look like their own prehistoric ancestors all part of James Cameron's new neighborhood. We're getting some street cred in the, in the deep ocean business, definitely. I grew up as a, a fan of science fiction. I love science fiction. I loved reading about alien worlds, alien civilizations, and the, the technology that we would create in order to get there. Well, now I get to do it. Say goodbye to the surface world. In the film, the ever-confident Cameron is a man on a mission, leading a small armada of deep sea diving submersibles to explore the world's oceans supported by an unlikely cast of characters, at least by Hollywood standards. That's no starlet, it's marine biologist Dejana Figueroa from the University of California, Santa Barbara. The work that I did on this film is actually gonna be in my PhD thesis, so it's actually advanced my, my career. And seismologist Maya Tolstoy is studying a deep ocean volcano. When it does erupt, then we'll have all that data beforehand to know what it was like before and after. And this is Tori Holer, an astrobiologist. I wound up on the cutting room floor, basically. Holer and other astrobiologists who did make it into the film work for NASA, America's space program, the same folks who are now planning future manned missions to Mars and beyond. Astrobiologists are interested, among other things, in figuring out how to look for life on other worlds. Two ships, four manned submersibles, 40 dives at 10 sites in both the Atlantic and Pacific. I like big operations, but this one was off the hook. What Cameron and his ensemble of scientists set out to do was visit a number of hostile environments deep in the Atlantic and Pacific, collect samples for later analysis, and document on 3D film their journey under the sea. It's like being on the moon, huh? Copy that. It's because the ocean bottom is so hostile that marine biologist Figueroa and the others were drawn to it to see what's there and how it survives. There are places in the ocean where sunlight has never reached, not since the world began, and yet amazing life forms thrive there. Four two, Kevin, you seeing this? Look at that. How does a creature like this work? Astrobiologist Kevin Hand was mesmerized. How can something like that be alive? And these. Well, look, look at them swarming. They love it in the smoke. Masses of shrimp gyrating in 750 degree heat from hydrothermal vents belching poisonous smoke on the ocean bottom. Cameron's subs lit up the perpetual night like a Hollywood set, and he sent in a small robot camera called Jake to take close-ups. The party's been going on down there in the dark for the last billion years, and it's gonna be going on for the next billion years. They're just doing their thing. It's got nothing to do with us. The sun could go out tomorrow, and they wouldn't know, and they wouldn't care. Uh, we're getting in position to get a water sample from the top of one of these structures over. And at the bottom of the food chain feeding everyone else, the bacteria. Astrobiologists like yeah. Pamela Conrad wonder if this is a model for life in the really extreme environments in outer space. There's definitely organic stuff there. So the more they can find out about these extreme environments, the more they'll be able to recognize what they're seeing maybe on Mars or deep under the surface of Mars or maybe further out in the solar system around the, the moons of Jupiter, let's say. Which is what the astrobiologists have been thinking, that the Earth's mysterious wet inner space may be very similar to a particular spot they know in outer space, Jupiter's moon Europa, a place with a frozen surface and quite possibly a huge liquid ocean beneath. The movie imagines an unmanned mission to Europa. 
we believe that there's enough heat to have something like hydrothermal vents, like the very systems that we're studying here. A lot of people here believe that life on Earth began around these hydrothermal vents, and the excitement generated about Europa is that perhaps life there could have begun the very same way. And that could answer some very intriguing questions. Are we really alone? Or is there some primordial stew bubbling away out in the universe? That's why the space scientist went deep sea diving to get a better idea of what to look for. And three, two, one. And why take. filmmaker James Cameron is so content in his deep sea submersible. Science fiction is entertaining, but here, reality is beyond imagination. Oh, this is gorgeous. I feel like I'm out there. Are you liking this? <laughs> I'm loving this. 